This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? Also brought to you by DoorDash, the app that brings you food you're craving right now, right to your door. Hello, Disney fans! Oh, hi, Disney! We are so excited to announce our next animated feature, Hans Christian Andersen's The Little Mermaid! Oh, that is gonna be amazing! Now, there are several changes we made to the story. Oh! <laughs> Okay, anything from you is fine. First off, the mermaid doesn't die in the end. Oh, wow, that really changes a lot, but that's fine. The sea witch is the villain. That fundamentally changes the story, but again, that's totally fine. Also, her tongue isn't cut out. That's fine. She doesn't feel pain when she walks. That's fine. She changes back and forth into a mermaid instead of staying human. Oh, I see what you're doing. The turning into sea foam thing is gone. I'm just gonna keep saying that's fine until we get to the punchline. She doesn't have to kill the prince. That's fine. In fact, she ends up with the prince. That's fine. In fact, there's basically no sacrifice completely going against the original moral. That'd be like if the little match girl became a millionaire, but that's fine. There's a Caribbean crab sidekick. Let me guess. I say, why would I have a problem with a Caribbean character in this? And those are all the changes we have in mind. Well, that sounds like a complete betrayal of what The Little Mermaid is. But I'm sure with some great music, amazing animation, and charming characters, it's going to be fantastic. Oh, and one more thing. Somewhere down the line, we're going to make her black. <laughs> I'm the nostalgia critic guy, remember it so you don't have to. Oh, don't let that opening fool you, this movie's still awful. <laughs> it hasn't been the best year for Disney, has it? With films majorly underperforming, some attractions closing, and I guess controversy for people who haven't seen anything for 30 years? Like I've mentioned in the past, unless it directly goes against the idea of the story, I just don't care one way or another if a race or gender is switched out. I'm not gonna suddenly hate these characters because someone's amazing imagination can't handle a different skin tone. But with that said, I'm not gonna pretend like Disney's so brave for doing this either. Mulan has all Asian actors, unlike before. Okay, movie's still terrible. I honestly give Disney credit when they give a different race a good original story as opposed to white people's pandering table scraps. But yeah, I'm not gonna play along like people have always hated these remakes when a lot of folks gave me flack for calling each of them dog shit and then the teaser shows the only good thing in this movie, Bailey singing, and suddenly react like, oh, I've always hated these. No, I've always hated these, and I hated them for the good old fashioned reasons, bad character and story. So yeah, I don't care what title card with big text, a crying star, and an evil Mickey you have. I also don't care what progressive checklist you judge movies by now when tons of creators have said Disney's as woke as Sleeping Beauty. I'm judging this piece of shit like I would judge any piece of shit. And with all that out of the way, this isn't the worst of them, but <laughs> it's bad. I really like the original one despite the major changes to the story, and the idea of giving it the same treatment that made Simba and Mufasa look at each other with epic indifference is not an accomplishment. So in what way does this Disney remake meet the same blandness as the other Disney remakes? Well, let's take a closer look. This is hopefully a fad that's wrapping up soon, The Little Mermaid. We open with, to be fair, some gorgeous cinematography of giant waves. When the film decides, hey, there should be one thing from Hans Christian Andersen in here, right? Yeah, amazing quote in a remake of a movie where the mermaid gets everything she wants. And no joke in this version, I actually think she gets them a little easier. <laughs> oh, the movie wants to kill itself even before it gets started. You won't stop worrying so much about me, Grimsby! We're introduced to Prince Eric, played by Jonah Howard King, who is acting most unorthodox! Eric, pay attention! <laughs> oh, I'd love to, but I'm just filled with too much whimsical enchantment! <gasps> Burn shit! <laughs> we then cut to the Kingdom of Atlantica, which if like in the original is the most beautiful sand castle of turds in the sea. Eh, I guess that doesn't have to be censored at least. Where King Triton, played by Javier Bardem, is meeting up with his daughters. Different so mothers, to speak. Huh? No, they're not. Racially, he's pretty cool. <laughs> yep, all the daughters are different races and there's no explanation. 
I mean, I guess they're mermaids, you can do whatever you want, but they go out of their way to write a backstory explaining why the prince and his mother are different races. May I remind you that a deadly shipwreck first brought you to us? So it is odd leaving it open if this is just how mermaids are born, if they're adopted, or if the king just kept putting his triton and other fish in the sea. Where is Ariel? Ariel, of course, is missing, and we see her, played by Haley Bailey, exploring the sunken ships of the sea. Look at this. It's the smallest trident I've ever seen. I wonder why a human would need one that size. I bet Scuttle will know. So as you may have quickly noticed, everyone's on autopilot in this. I guess if I was hanging on wires and had Smurf people touching me all over, I might not give the best performance. But the writing, much like the other Disney remakes, is two-thirds copy and paste. And you can stay out here and watch the sharks. What? Ariel? Wait! So we're just waiting for everyone to say the lines we remember being fresh in the original, but re like TikTok text audio now. Calm down. Nothing is going to happen. The effects aren't too great either. At least the original is supposed to look animated. Everyone here looks like that weird head jerk Han Solo did in the special edition. Why? After escaping the shark, Ariel and Flounder make their way to Scuttle, played by Aquafina, who's a bird I guess can hold her breath underwater? And while yes, I looked it up to see if that's true, I'm not convinced this movie knew that. Wasting your time with this no nothing bird that can't tell swimming from flying. Oh, also, Sebastian's terrifying. Okay, to be fair, I don't know how I would design him in real life. I guess they did make the original look like a clitoris with claws, but this thing looks like someone drunkenly 3D printed a pistachio to look like Mr. Krabs. I suppose you've completely forgotten tonight's the Carl Moon. David Diggs does his voice. And while he's nothing great, he's certainly better than Melissa McCarthy, who I swear sounds drunk throughout the majority of the movie. Banished and exiled, driven halfway to madness. What you really want is to be up there in the above world. I can't bear to see you suffer like this. You won't have this tail of yours hanging around. I didn't think that little barracuda stood a chance luring him in. get the wrong idea, by far the worst actor is surprisingly Javier Bardem, who either doesn't know how to act with effects, Disney, water, or all three. So you went to the shipwrecks again. You're the most dangerous species of all. This obsession with humans has to stop. You broke the rules. Every single line sounds like a table reading. It's weird to think Francis's boss commanded more authority. You should have let him drown. You're absolutely right, Sebastian. They killed your mother. Daydreaming, disappearing for hours. Promise me you will never look for him again. You're savages. I didn't mean to yell like that. Or like that. Like I mentioned before though, Bailey's singing is one of the strong points of the film. Honestly, most of the song sequences are pretty well done. Part of that world. As much as I think Rob Marshall has only directed one good movie, he does usually know how to shoot a musical number. Sun, wonder, and free. Wish I could be. Granted, her speaking moments in the song could be a little better. Again, I think you can blame the awkward acting direction for that. But when she has to belt it out, her voice is goddamn angelic. I'll admit, it's the only reason I was glad to see this on IMAX because the massive sound system filling the room with her voice was one of the most pleasant theater experiences I had all year. Ready to stay. Oh wait, black. Yeah, so I can't like it. Uh, here, does that make it better? Does that mean this is good now? I don't know the rules, I just know this sounds nice. But damn, there's a shitty remake that has to keep going. As Ariel sees a ship passing by celebrating the prince's birthday. I like the addition that she sneaks aboard a lifeboat as, I guess it does make a bit more sense than her just climbing the ship. But the meetup is quickly interrupted. Eyes turned right ahead! As in the original, Ariel saves the prince from drowning and brings him to shore. Oh, that's the statue, by the way. Yeah, remember what big deal they made of it in the original? Well, this one, it literally just flies by! Blink and you miss it. In fact, it looks so little like him, they have to actually do a jump cut to reassure people that's him. Why do these movies keep cutting down the important scenes and keep expanding the unimportant ones? Ariel doesn't even talk to Scuttle or Flounder after saving him. She just launches into song. Is he dead? He's breathing. He's so beautiful.
And look, I know these moments aren't long, but they are important. It's the difference between Beauty and the Beast looking lovingly at each other, playing with the dog, having dinner, Beast learning how to use a spoon, Belle playfully dragging him to teach him how to dance, and them just blankly walking into the ballroom like zombies. Pretend this is the first time anybody's seen this story and put the same amount of effort into it! Ariel, what are you doing with that... that thing? Who even is that? A Roman Jonas brother? Yeah, we literally just had a song two minutes ago. Of course we're ready for another one! This seaweed is always greener. It's somebody else's lake. Okay, so again, to the film's credit, this is the only part of the movie I actually like better than the original. Don't get me wrong, it makes absolutely no sense they sing about playing instruments, and they're literally playing no instruments. The new play the flute, the cop play the harp, the bass play the bass. What the hell are you talking about? But while the original song was fun for what it was, this is visually dazzling. Happy underwater scenes in this movie look really dark and flat, but moments like this are colorful, creative, and have real life to them. And yet, because I think they knew Bailey's voice was the best part of the film, they let her sing a lot more in this. Yeah, I never put together. Ariel only has one song in the original. I guess one and a half if you count when her voice is taken, but again, that's not much. I imagine if Katzenberg did cut that song out, Eric would be like, A girl rescued me. She had the most beautiful, quiet reactions. I like because they already showed her with the statue. Ariel literally has nowhere to go at the end of the song. Ariel. Guess she was just bored. God, this writing's bad. We see Eric with his mother, the queen, which on a side note, I always give credit when story actually shows a prince or princess's parents. It always feels weird when you hear they rule everything, but there's never a king or queen in sight. And she's played very well by Noma Duma Sweeney. But man, I hope you enjoy those political talks about foreign negotiations in the Aladdin remake. Oh, you don't even remember it? Fear not, you won't remember this either. I'm trying to reach out to other cultures so we don't get left behind. Risking your life on some trade You know, on this last trip, we traded our cane for 20 cases of quinine. We cannot keep tempting fate like this. They use it in Europe to treat malaria. But your responsibilities are here now. How many shipwrecks have there been in our waters this year? Six, Your Majesty. Did you hear that, Eric? Should we put a C-SPAN logo at the bottom of the screen? Who cares? Oh, and to make things weirder, the Queen actually believes there are people living in the ocean. The sea gods are against us, eroding our land from under us, stealing it back into the ocean. Wow, that not only sucks out the mystery and enchantment of discovering mermaids, but it also makes them pretty dumb. Why wouldn't you reach out? This isn't like a foreign country you might be at odds with. This is like an alien race that might have some supernatural shit. Wouldn't you want to know as much as you could about them? No more voyages, and no more chasing after girls who don't exist. You believe in sea gods? Why is it so hard to believe a girl from the ocean saved him? Thank God, a pointless song will save the day. But I'm still lost at sea. Oh, that was, uh... I'm right where you left me. Okay, you're almost passable. In uncharted waters, come find me. You're not Russell Crowe. Can we just play Bailey's music over him? Ready to stay. Again, just to clarify, loved by audiences. Little town, it's a quiet village. Two million downvotes. Part of that world. Well, I don't know about everyone else, but I just don't know about everyone else. Hey, it's Santa. Yeah, they're finally trying to hunt me down for taking over so many holidays. I know everyone's like, give the holidays their own time, but they're mine. I got Thanksgiving under my belt, I was trying to take over Halloween a little earlier than usual this year, and yeah, it's only a matter of time, they're all gonna belong to me. But that's okay, the earlier you think about my holiday, the more you can utilize DoorDash. Tis the season to skip the in-store rush. When the holidays knock, answer with DoorDash. And when I knock, say, hey, why aren't you coming down the chimney? And I'll say, shut up. Get holiday groceries and gifts delivered fast and enjoy everything you need for hosting and toasting. Make DoorDash your go-to for getting holiday gifts and ingredients right when you need them. You can skip the trip to the store with fast delivery so you can stock up on holiday groceries and home goods. Ho ho. 
Oh. Whether it's same-day delivery of gifts, groceries, or those last-minute party essentials, DoorDash has got you covered. With thousands of grocery and retail stores available nationwide, you'll find whatever you need, when you need them. Don't sweat the shipping rush. With last-minute delivery, you never have to show up empty-handed. Because with DoorDash, you've got an extra hand to grab everything you need for a happy holiday season. Order now and you might have it delivered by sleigh. You like how I use the word might? That means never, unless you have a really eccentric driver. As a DoorDash member, you can enjoy exclusive offers and perks all season long on stocking stuffers, decor, groceries, meals, and more. You also get a zero dollar delivery fee and reduced service fees on eligible orders too. Cause I mean, what are you gonna do? Call them the Thanksgiving mascot? What, what even is a can of cranberry jelly that cries? Actually, that'd be awesome. But here's a deal for you. Get everything you need for the holidays at your door with DoorDash. Use the code CRITICHOLIDAY to get 50% off up to $10 value when you spend $15 or more at convenience, grocery, or select retail stores on DoorDash. Terms apply. As the new ruler of all holidays, I don't need transitions, so stamps. Did you forget to add stamps.com to your holiday wish list last year? Wow, we all make mistakes. But it's good, sir or man, because Stamps.com has been helping businesses like yours save time and money during the holiday rush for 25 years with easy access to USPS and UPS services and premium rates for all your postage needs. That was a lot to say in one sentence. The holidays are hard enough. Make things easier than ever with Stamps.com. All you need is a computer and printer. They even send you a free scale so you'll have everything you need to get started. It's like I came in and gave you a free scale instead of stuff you like. Unless you like free scales, in which case I'm praying for you. Now, taking care of orders on the go is easier than ever with the Stamps.com mobile app. If you need a package pickup, you can easily schedule it through your Stamps.com dashboard. And if you sell products online, Stamps.com seamlessly connects with every major marketplace and shopping cart. Fear me, or don't, I don't care. Order shipping and mailing supplies, labels, and even printers from the supply store. Plus, Stamps.com automatically tells you your cheapest and fastest shipping options. Why, for 25 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over 1 million businesses? That sounds like a natural thing people say. There's no lines, no traffic, no waiting. So you know, for this holiday that's now all holidays, give your business the gift of Stamps.com so your mailing and shipping is covered this holiday season. Sign up at Stamps.com slash Nostalgia for a special offer that includes a four-week free trial, plus free postage, and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com slash Nostalgia. Oh, and don't worry about the Easter Bunny, he was delicious. Doug plays Spider-Man 2 every Friday on Twitch. We also have content five days a week. Hope to see you there. Like before, Sebastian accidentally tells Triton about Ariel's crush, forcing him to lose his temper if there was in fact any temper to lose. You're savages. You don't know that. They killed your mother. All seven of them. He's compassionate and kind. He's a human! He saved his dog! That dog could have been the next Mussolini! No! Please! He destroys everything as half-assed as possible. I'm sorry, just compare how traumatizing this moment is compared to them barely even pushing each other. <laughs> eh, I can get another at five below. Seriously, there is no emotion to this scene. He can be so angry. Auntie Ursula says she can help though, and yes, I did say Auntie, which apparently is a holdover from the Broadway show. I guess it doesn't take away anything, but it doesn't really add anything either. It'd be like finding out Scuttle and Wilbur are related. Who cares? And she tells Ariel to come to her lair. Hey, bitch, you invited me! Yeah, nobody's turned to little creatures in this one, so that scene makes no sense. Unfortunate souls in pain, in need. No, really. Is she supposed to sound like Madeline Kahn from Blazing Saddles? And I'm afraid I have to rake them across the coast. <laughs> Again, though, this song sequence does have some real life to it. With some cool camera work, inventive visuals, and decent orchestrations. As Ariel's told, she has only three days to get the prince to kiss her once she's human. Once again, though, not everything makes sense. And you belong to me. No, Ariel, shh. Why'd he shush him? What was he like? Shh. I want to hear where she's going with this. There's also this weird line. Look at her stupid little feet! What joke am I even supposed to make to that? And then there's this plot thread that, for the life of me, I can't follow. Slept a little something extra into that spell of mine. She won't remember she needs to get that kiss. What? 
I've had people try to explain this to me, and funny enough, they usually get confused trying to explain it. I'm told it has something to do with the Kiss the Girl song being offensive, and this somehow fixes that. Well, why doesn't she just make her forget she even wants the prince if she has that power? Also, I'll just say it, I don't get what the hell's offensive about the Kiss the Girl song. Like, what, did she not want to be kissed? Everything about her body language and literally the plot of the story says she does. Is it about the prince being put under peer pressure? That seems kind of silly. Is it pro-capsizing? I don't get what's wrong with this. What are you gonna say, the prince can't save Snow White's life because she didn't consent to the kiss? They're really saying that? So what's the happy ending supposed to be? He just lets her die? Maybe. I might I make a recommendation? Perhaps, just perhaps, people know these are fairy tales. As in not real life. I mean, Christ, do we need these disclaimers at the beginning while we're at it? Look at me suddenly, I am on land and I'm free. Don't mind me. Ariel's given another song when she's on dry land, as she mentally sings about all the emotions she's experiencing. Again, I am all for giving this actress more songs, and on top of that, it's not a bad one. I like just relying on Ariel's expressions in the original, but because this is a remake, I want them to do something different. This is a new way that expresses what she's going through that's both unique and fits. As I wait for the first time, here for the first time. I also think this is where Bailey's acting suddenly turns on. Again, I give credit, she's not just reenacting the big expressions from the original. She's much more reserved, but you can see she's taking everything in. You can see her eyes darting at everything. You can tell it's sensory overload acting like she's both a little afraid, but also really excited. Literally, a fish out of water. What are you doing here? Ow. Oh, has Ariel killed the prince yet? That's the original ending. God, imagine the disclaimers if they did that. They also attempt to give Eric and Ariel more time together, which as I said in the review of the original, I think it would have made more sense if they grew their chemistry before she became a human. Like maybe they talked for a long time, but she couldn't reveal herself to him. I don't know, structurally I think that makes more sense, but I do like they give them more scenes to build chemistry. Oh, by the way, did you think Ariel was the Little Mermaid? Pfft, dumbass! My Little Mermaid. I found her on the coast of Cartagena. Yeah, it's this thing that impacts the story in absolutely no way. Let me guess, the title is offensive now, isn't it? Well, I can't wait until Disney does a remake of the remake so we can get this title. We get a cute cameo from Jodie Benson and another nice scene where Eric tries to guess Ariel's name. Again, this is one of the few moments I actually like better than the original. Aries, a Aries, Ariel, Aries. Well, it's nice to finally meet you, Aries Bubble. It's the same idea, but with a new spin. That's what these movies should be. But we go back to paint by watercolors as Ursula, like in the original, uses Ariel's voice to change her form and hypnotize the prince. Aw, couldn't she still sing like McCarthy? Hey, remember that additional song earlier that really fit in with the others? Let's balance it out with one that doesn't match at all. Well, I was flying over land and sea and ear to the ground. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it ends as bad as to start skipping. Ariel sees the downvotes work though, as she's been replaced by a white woman. You shall introduce your intended to the court. All hail the Hypnotoad. I mean, yes. Once again, everything is beat by beat the same, with Scuttle seeing the new bride as Ursula, letting Ariel know, and all of them banding together to get her voice back. Eric, it's me! Oh, <coughs> got a sound on it. <coughs> Time runs out, though, as she's turned back into a mermaid, and Ursula grabs her. Eric! Oh, this was a mistake! Why'd I think we survived this? King Triton tries to save her, but Ursula agrees to let her go only if Triton takes her place. <laughs> she turned me into pea soup, and I still found a way to make it boring. You are powerless against me! Like I said, beat for beat the same thing. Ariel saves Eric, Ursula turns into drag Thanos, and Eric drives the ship into her. I mean, Ariel, who has no idea how a ship works, drives it into her. Seriously, couldn't you replace the cart scene with a ship scene? I mean, at least that would help. <laughs> okay, on the one hand, this is kind of all her fault, so I guess it's kind of taking responsibility, but wasn't Eric killing Ursula how Triton saw not all humans are bad? I guess in this one, he's like, You know, I loved him as Lori Lawrence and Little Women. Anyone who looks good in a top hat can't be evil. 
Tritons. Triton somehow brings him back to life. I don't know. And he returns to his majestic indifference. All the mutters now is that you're safe and home. Again, I hate when I get emotional like that. We need a boat! Grimsby, we have to find her! And then what? Well, shape of water banging, obviously. Our worlds were never meant to be together. I guess they just give up looking for her because... True love? But Tritan sees Ariel as miserable and finally turns her permanently into her human self. I knew you would never stop looking for me. Stop or start? The two get married because hitching someone you've known for three days is fine, but this song is evil, I guess. And the queen vows that their two worlds should not stay apart. We got you something, Ariel. My little mermaid. Oh, yeah. 100% worth the namesake of the film. I'm as baked as a raspberry cobbler. Your head looks like a slider, man. You shouldn't have had to give up your voice to be heard. Okay, give him a cookie, that's a good line. And I will always be here for you. No, get this movie as far away from me as humanly possible. I also love it looks like it's gonna end on this sweeping image similar to how the original did, but then for no reason, it cuts to this generic shot of the water. Because... water? Why would they do that? Why would they do any of this? Why would they remake what was already perfectly fine? It's Disney. It sadly is. This movie's bad, and it's bad for all the reasons most of the other remakes are bad. Like I said though, I can't say it's the worst because there are one or two enjoyable elements, most of them around the musical sequences. Bailey's voice, like I've mentioned repeatedly, is wonderful to listen to. Once in a while, her acting is okay. Most of the song numbers are inventive and have life to them. And that is more than I can give a lot of these other remakes. But aside from that, it's pretty weak. It just feels like they're using the same script and even storyboards to tell the exact same story, but with nothing fresh or innovative about it, so you're constantly reminded of how much better the original handled it. These Disney remakes honestly serve as proof of how well done the originals were already handled. If they really wanted to try something creative and unique, they would tell these stories closer to how the originals went. Stick to the original text of The Jungle Book, or Beauty and the Beast, or yes, Little Mermaid. Make them more dramatic and dark. If there's anything 80s Disney has shown us is that kids can handle it. But they won't, because as mentioned, It's Disney. But on the plus side, it sounds like people are finally getting tired of these remakes, as many of them, including this one, aren't quite doing the numbers they were hoping for. Disney has had so many peaks and valleys in their lifetime, and when they start to do bad, that's usually when they start to experiment and innovate again. Let's hope those days are close by, because if we have to put up with any more of these, there's gonna be a lot more poor, unfortunate souls. I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember? So you don't have to. Look at us, stupid little feet! This month for Cameos for Charity, we're doing Beyond Hunger. We actually worked with them in the past, and they reflect the steadfast dedication and collaborative spirit of Oak Park River Forest Food Pantry in Illinois. They express their mission to end hunger in all the communities they serve, and this Thanksgiving, you can play a big part in helping many people not go hungry. So if you want a cameo from me saying happy birthday or good luck or whatever, click on the link below and be giving to a good cause. Or if you're like, no, I hate you, go to hell, well, consider giving to this cause anyway. You could donate food, money, or even volunteer. It's a wonderful organization helping a ton of people, and you can help them in their journey.